Welcome to the J. Kim Show. This is your host, J. Kim. I am an investor, author, and fitness entrepreneur. And for the first time in Asia, I sit down with the world's most brilliant minds in business, investing, and entrepreneurship. You'll learn all the secrets, strategies, and formulas to becoming a successful entrepreneur directly from the masters. If this is your first time listening, thank you for stopping by. This podcast is produced every week with the goal of providing actionable insight to you, the listener, with every single episode. And now, on to the show. Today's guest is Marina Bay, who is one of the co-founders of BeFast TV. BeFast is a media company that was originally started to help startup founders document their startup journey. Marina is very active here in the local Hong Kong startup scene, and her company now has expanded into doing events. And she is throwing an event tonight at the Start Me Up Hong Kong 2017 Festival. Uh, it's going to start at 5.30 p.m. at Cube, uh, which is at the PMQ on Aberdeen Street. So if you guys are based in Hong Kong, head on over to fashiontech.asia, buy your ticket, go see the Fashion Tech event. It's going to include a catwalk at the end. Uh, she has promised that. She talks about uh, all of that in today's episode. So let's get right into the show. Marina, thank you for joining the podcast. We're very excited. We have a very exciting Start Me Up week coming up ahead. But before we get into that, I would just like to ask you a few questions about yourself. What do you do for a living? How did you become an entrepreneur? Uh, and maybe a little bit about your background. Yeah, absolutely, Jay. So thank you again for having me here. And yeah, it's true indeed that we're all excited about the Start Me Up HK coming week in January. So, and personally, I'm so glad that this time I'm not just simply attend the, you know, the week and the conferences during this week, but also we are one of the companies that's hosting the event. So it's like double excitement for, for my company and for myself personally. As for my background, I'm Russian actually. So I came to Hong Kong like five years ago. So after my, um, study uh, back in Moscow and then I studied for a while in Germany, Berlin and then of course I made some uh, study in China so that's why like my move to Hong Kong was quite smooth move from China to Hong Kong. I see. What part of China were you in? I was in Chengdu, Sichuan province. Okay and do you speak Chinese? I speak a little Mandarin but you know like people, I think foreigners will understand me who live in Hong Kong because Hong Kong people speak absolutely amazing English and it's not really necessary to know either Cantonese nor Mandarin unless you speak English, right? That's right. Yeah, I don't speak either. And I've lived, I've been living here for 11 years. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. So actually, that that's interesting. I didn't actually know that you were Russian. I I wouldn't have guessed. Anyways, yeah, I know. Yeah. Like my parents who can uh, see me or who met me before, they, of course, the first impression, uh, um, like a girl living in Hong Kong with Asian appearance, she must be Chinese. Yeah, but I'm not because Russia is big and there are a lot of nationalities, including, including some Asian looking nationalities. So, yeah, yeah, I studied economics and management. And I got lucky to get job in Hong Kong. So I was for a while. So I like I worked for a small boutique company, foreign company here in Hong Kong. Uh, and I made my way all the way from you know from reception to uh, customer relationship manager. Oh wow! And this is for a boutique retail. It like was a, a boutique uh, legal firm. Like so, I think it's it gave me the background of. Um, and understanding actually the legal part of uh, of doing business in Hong Kong. I mean, all the papers and how it works. Like, uh, who is the shareholder? Who is the shareholder? Who are directors? And so on. So, what are the rules on paper? How to run the company from legal point of view? That's very important, and it usually costs a lot of money because people don't know anything about it. Like myself, when I was in college, my worst grade was uh, business law. <laughs> so I knew I would never become a lawyer. And uh, now I have to, if I ever want to get any legal documents looked at, I have to pay an exorbitant amount of money to get a, a lawyer to look at it. So it's very good that you, and useful that you have that legal background. 
Okay, so how long were you there for? Is, yes, I think it's very useful uh, knowledge that I gained uh, while working for this company. Uh, I was working for the company for like two years and a half or three years, around three years. But, you know, I, I, it's, it's really worth to make a point that Hong Kong is not that complicated in terms of setting up a company. And I really have to mention to, to our audience that it's, it's, it's simple to just go and set up a company by yourself. Like everything is very clear and transparent. You just go to uh, some government uh, websites and it says it's pretty clear what you need to do, what kind of documents you need to prepare and so on. Yeah, it's, it's definitely globally, it's one of the most friendly locations to set up a, a business. That's for sure. Um, and so, okay, so what year did you come to Hong Kong? The beginning 2012. So 2012 and then so you were, then you worked at the, the legal law firm for two years. Yes. And then was it at, at that point that you branched out and you decided that you wanted to do something more entrepreneurial or was there another step along the way? Uh, well, so I think like it's three years for everyone, maybe not only for the relationship, but also for, for your career path, right? It's like, okay, now I have to move on and do something else. So, and it, it, it's really important to, um, to hang out with right people, with people who can, uh, advise you something say like yes marina you're doing great and i think you uh you know it's right decision that you, you that you want to move forward and try something else try yourself in other industries or uh in different you know part of business so yeah i was talking to my mentors i would say here in hong kong and my friends and they advised me like yeah you can do something else like how do you see yourself in five years <laughs> So and then I was yeah I was already an understood by then that I love to talk to people I'm quite very sociable person so it's it's not a big deal for me just to go somewhere and just talk to strangers and have these very engagement conversations so but yes I want to I, I want to talk to people I, I'm not ready to sit in front of a computer the whole day and just dealing with paper and then you know I came across with some of my friends and they're already uh, starting the business called. They called it Be Fast, actually, already. So, so the venture already existed, and I just joined uh, with um, joined them. Uh, so I have co-founders in my company. So I joined them and tried myself, and we realized that kind of working. So that's why I decided. Well, we all decided to say that. Okay, Marina, you like you're gonna be in charge of the all operations and activities. That's why, like, I have these different hats, like CEO and video video journalist, and uh, you know, right. co-founder as well. Well, yeah, a startup. If you're a startup founder, or if you've ever worked in a startup, you you realize that there is no such thing as this is my sole responsibility. Right? You right. end up doing everything. Right. <laughs> Which is fun and it's challenging and you learn a lot, but it's also stressful a lot of times because it's just so many things you're juggling at once, right? Absolutely, yeah. So the business that you, BeFast, has it iterated at all or it was always the same thing from the moment when you joined? It was still the exact same thing that it is now? Oh, I guess it's impossible to have just on the exact thing that's like, I think our business model changes daily. <laughs> <laughs> We try to think, okay, let's do this. No, no, let's do another thing. And then you're just trying to jump from another thing to, you know, different parts of uh, ventures. But, you know, what is consistent? And I think it's very important that I'm trying to communicate to, uh, to my co-founders and teammates that we having this media platform called BeFast.tv. And we have our own media platform where we can generate our own content and drive traffic and, you know, lead to, to this content. Because... Nowadays, it's like to have your own channel on TV. And I see BeFast.TV as a platform for any other business activities that we can build on top of it because it's going to be our basis. So if we manage to build it through and to gain the traffic and to gain like more subscri subscribers and views, then we can promote other businesses, not only our clients' businesses, customers' potential, customers' business, but also our own businesses that we and having a future, hopefully. I mean, it's definitely the way of the future. If you think about the shift that's happened in the last five, maybe five to 10 years, but it's not that long ago that there's a huge shift into social media, video, mobile. I mean, these are all trends that are going to be there 
for the next 10, 20, 30 years, right? So the fact that you are setting up a platform, not just for what you guys want to do, but that you can then add layers on top of that, or you can host other people's on your media platform. And that, I think that's really powerful. If you think about attention, where it's going to be in the future, it's going to be a video, you know, no one reads anymore, right? No one has, attention is so hard to grasp now and people don't have time for any of this type of stuff. So it has to be very evocative, very, you know, gripping content, very good content, but it also has to be in a form that's very easily consumable. And reading a blog post or a book is just not everyone is, can consume content like that. And it's less and less. I think people, the more they're around cell phones and mobile and so um, I think it's a good trend. It's a very good trend that you're jumping on. And, uh, and also the cool thing and unique thing is in Hong Kong, you're a very early adopter. I mean, there's not, there's no one, right? I mean, there are parts of larger organizations that might be trying to do something like this, but I actually haven't seen anything like BFast before. So why don't you tell our audience exactly what BFast is? And maybe you can talk about your company a little bit. Uh, sure. So, uh, BFast TV is an um, online video channel with a focus on startups and entrepreneurship. So, you know, we're trying to go to startups and those small companies that are trying something new and innovative, trying to bring some innovative product and service into the market and, um, you know, get the story out of them and then put it uh, into the video and upload it to online so the whole world can see what's going on. And, you know, since we started from Hong Kong, we decided, like, Hong Kong is pretty small market, right? So that's why we said, no, we're not going to concentrate only in Hong Kong market. Let's interview and meet startups and the whole startup community, including VC firms, uh, you know, accelerate as different parties who involved into the entrepreneurial world, not only in Hong Kong, but that across Asia, as well as Europe and of course Silicon Valley because Silicon Valley is the mecca for all tech companies and all innovation. So that's why we say, okay, let's put some efforts, let's uh, pack our equipment and go to you know to the biggest startup ecosystem and you know it's startup centers in the world like uh, San Francisco, Silicon Valley, and then we've been to even Finland. Uh, we're planning to go to Berlin, Tel Aviv, yeah, so all these countries. And because, like, it's amazing, the, the whole startup community is interesting for me because people are open to talk about their businesses, about their ventures. So that's actually the BFAST TV is trying to put it to the audience saying, like, these are people that are trying something new, that really trying hard to innovate. And it's not only here in Hong Kong, but that's, it's everywhere. Yeah. So, okay. So the company was started to help the, the little guy, like the small startups that needed their voice to be heard. Is that, is that right? That's how you guys wanted this to start off as? Well, this was clear from out curiosity because I'm curious, like, how do you start? How do you manage to motivate your team? Like, how do you push uh, your services further? How do you get your first funding and investment? And it's, it's like clear media and journalism because... Uh, nobody pays us. We just go and we are truly interested in your story. And if you're interested, we really want to hear your story. And we try our best to edit it and put in a you know quality way online. So you are literally, yeah, you're just capturing, yeah. you're documenting a startup, their Journeys. startup's journey, exactly. basically. All the challenges they face, what you know, and, and along the way, you're going to, so you basically repurpose that into content put it on your site and share it yes share the message with the world okay that's great i mean i think um you know i've seen your site i've, I've looked around it and it looks really nice and it's very pleasing you know it's it's a beautiful site so it's uh you know visually it's very uh evocative right so it makes you want to stay on the home page click around you can consume little bits of espresso shots of content right little videos here um, there's a podcast, there's some news and whatnot, so, and a blog, so it's very nice. And, um, so then now the next question is what's your revenue model? Because you can't, I mean, it's nice and it's very kind of you to be going around trying to be a good Samaritan and helping these startups, uh, you know, spread their word and document their process and maybe helping them with a funding round. But at the end of the day, you guys are also running a company. 
So how do you plan on you know, generating some revenue? Okay, as you mentioned, video is a big trend and online video is a big trend. So first of all, we got the media platform. And of course, it, it, since we're generating our own video content, we got the full house of, like we got the proper video production house. So we have all newest equipment that we can get now in the market. Of course, there, are, there is always room for improvement and like new cameras just you know popping up on the market like every day. But we realized that we have everything in order to name ourselves a video production company. And um, as more we there uh, somewhere in the market between startups, the more companies they see in us as a video production company. And, you know, we get these inquiries from people like, okay, I need actually a video crew, professional video crew who can document our uh, either event or we want to tell about our services in market we're ready to pay. Or like, for example, if the city is having the whole week of uh, startup conferences, they can also hire us saying like, you know guys what you're doing, you have a particular focus about startups, you know what kind of questions you need to ask, you know whom to interview, you know like where to put the cameras and so on. So we know what to ask, where to put, so technically and um, from the content point of view, so they hire us. So this is like one part of the business model as a um, video production house. And do you, sorry, do you also do the post-production, like editing and yes. stuff like that, or is it just? All together, oh, okay. so we do video, so we go to the to the set, or we uh, like video shoot everything, and then we do post-production, animation, 3D graphics. Oh wow, yeah. so it's literally a whole package. They're hiring you to basically do the yes. entire thing, yes. the whole production, right. And just out of curiosity, What's the pricing like on something like that? I mean, I, I'm completely ignorant. I, I don't know how much these things cost. I mean, I'm just curious. Let's say I, would, I wanted to hire BFest for a three-hour conference that I was putting on, or like an afternoon conference. Yeah, three, four hours. Have you guys run around and maybe produce a 30-minute segment on it? What do you think that would cost? me as a event organizer it depends on your budget it depends how cool you want to have it because we have pretty simple packages and it's very like it's just market price because in our world we charge per hour we charge per hour we charge how many people you need because you have not only videographer but there's also you have assistant to videographers what kind of equipment you want to use it's kind of different cameras lights microphones sound systems and then on top of it we can do live streaming, like we can do live streaming and do live editing for you. Like if you want to have your, you know, your own live system and then you want to live stream online your event. So we can do this. If you want to use drones, 360, you know, we can do so different packages depends on your budget. And you own all the equipment that you have? Yes, we do this. Like, yeah. even though, you know, this world is very, because I'm learning too, like I'm here in the business only one year and a half, but I managed to hire uh, professionals and they telling me, okay, Marina, if we have even though big event and we're not at the capacity, we always can hire freelancers and it works like this. Yeah. So we're pretty comfortable manage uh, small and big events. Okay. That's awesome. So one stop shop kind of video production crew, if you want to get something done, I guess that you could even start from the planning stage, right? Let's say I wanted to do an event. I would bring you in early on and say, okay, here's how I want the end result to look, you know, and then, and then we could work together like that, right? Okay, and then what else do you guys have? Is that your only source of revenue or, or is there any other things that you guys are working on as well? Well, now we're trying to step in into events. So start, start me up, HK. Uh, come oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Good segue into the to what you guys are doing. This is going to be a big week. Right. So we step into the event organizing business. And it's going to be a, for us, it's going to be our pilot event. And we got so lucky that um, InvestHK got this a small you know, gap or room. We tried to squeeze our event. And it, we were thinking, okay, what kind of theme, what kind of topic we can bring to the Hong Kong audience and to those international guests who are coming to Hong Kong to for this week. So, of course, we have FinTech, HealthTech, Retail Tech coming. And then we thought, okay, what about Fashion Tech? I think it's awesome. I, I've never <laughs> even heard of it, but I think it's really, really good. I think uh, it's going to be... I think a lot of people will show up to that just because it's so it, unique, right? It's unique for Asia. You, you will be surprised because... 
fashion tag in the West, like London, Berlin, New York, it's there already for many years. So they're having conferences every year, several times maybe a year in those cities. But it's here first time in Hong Kong, in Asia in general. Okay, so so tell us, Marina, what exactly is fashion tech? What, when you say fashion tech, what does that mean? Okay, so I think that recently technology, like the whole topic about technology became so popular because because of maybe the pace, the, the recent pace of development of technology. But fashion, I think fashion always been there. Like, and you cannot make technology successful unless it's fashionable. So that's why I think it's very important to merge these things together because technology cannot, it's just technology, okay, so you have all these silicon wires and but this is not fashion, it's just something engineering part. And so we decided, okay, fashion, uh, people think about big brands, glamorous, something you know, very trendy, technology, something geeky, something that normal people don't have ex- access to that. But in fact, these two things can be, should be together. They must be together. So because if you're a fashion designer, nowadays you cannot just produce, um, you know, clothes, which is not smart. Because if you look at the current generation, like millennials, they want everything to be connected to their phone and to be trackable. So that's how we see and we want people to talk about this more. And we want fashion designers who are very creative in terms of like, you know, design some new clothes or thing, and those people who in technology and know how to connect chips to wires and to application, they need to be together. That's interesting because when when you say when I hear fashion tech, what I think about and what you just described, I would think initially the vertical of just athletic sportswear, you know, Fitbit wearables you know, bags and clothes like Lululemon that have, you know, that thing where you could put your cord for your iPod and stuff like that, right? So that's what I would think initially. But you're saying that there's another, there's a whole scope behind that of even within the non-athletic apparel uh, segment. Is that right? It's true. Yeah, it's absolutely. So because, okay, you, yes, of course, you have wearables, you have uh, clothes, smart clothes, at the same time clothes. What is clothes? It's not only wires that um, uh, inside the, somewhere hidden uh, inside the clothes, but also it's about fabrics and new materials. Now, like, it's very popular to use the materials that they use in space and to to protect you from, I don't know, the sun or something like this. And then at the same time, you have fashion tech startups that focusing on um, big data, e-commerce, uh, or it can be a smart mirror. You know, it's all sort of things. Yeah, I think, uh, I guess... If you don't think about it and you're not exposed to it, then you don't actually know how wide exactly. of, you know, a segment that is. So for the conference, it's going to be on the first day. Is that right? The retail? Yes. It's- okay. And, um, and this was just pulled together through your network? Was it just your connections that you guys decided, oh, you know, we, we know people? I mean, because you're a media company, so you're not necessarily, I, mean, I guess there's some overlap, but how did you pull it all together? I think, yeah, we, because we worked pretty hard in uh, for the last year and we've been literally everywhere. Like every small event that we have, like, okay, here you go. Again, be fast to this, here, be fast to that. And then, of course, like some of uh, my uh, people from network that I know, they say, okay, let's do this because, uh, guys, you know everyone, you know not only people from Asia, but also know you people from Europe and from uh, the Bay Area. And so we can bring some really like celebrities from there to Hong Kong and to Asia because we are interested hearing what they say. But at the same time, you know, such a big interest uh, for them, like Asia is such a big interest for them because they just, oh my God, like China, Hong Kong, and then, you know, all the bigger markets like Indonesia or Malaysia, they also want to be there because at some point the Western market saturated and all these celebrities, they want to explore what's going on here. So we're, we're ready. We pitched our ability to host the event and we want to bring a value for the local market, for China market, for Hong Kong market, you know, saying like, okay, we, we know people we can make out of this conference something really big and interesting and valuable. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be something very unique, something very fresh. Can you give us any hints or clues as to what to expect when we show up at the event? <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, even though we have just a couple of hours and it's an evening event, we're still having um, a keynote speech uh, which we will start with an um, explanation what is fashion tech. Then we will move forward to panel discussions where we're going to put together different speakers from from the fashion industry, fashion tech industry, but you know, like we're gonna bring one startup, fashion tech startup, and then we're gonna bring some retail, e-commerce, and then some investors who invest in fashion tech, and then we're gonna discuss so what are the trends, who are the disruptors, and how we can you know disrupt the market and so on. And the next panel discussion is gonna be about new materials and new fabrics. And after that, uh, we were gonna have the pitch session where different startups going to pitch about their uh, devices or clothes uh, on stage and we're going to finish the whole event with a catwalk oh man yeah well it's it's still fashion right so we that's have right to have a runway come on we have to have a runway you know i mean okay so for any of the listeners out there if you've been on the mailing list or distribution you will have seen Marina's basically the flyer and it's a very evocative, uh, very elegant, evocative, uh, exciting design. So I think that's going to draw a big crowd. And uh, obviously now that you've confirmed that there's going to be a catwalk, I think uh, everyone's going to be, it's going to be crowded. Well, our, so. <laughs> our slogan for the event is let us make technology sexy again. Amazing. That's such a good, that's such a good slogan. Okay, awesome. So I just have a few more questions for you, Marina. Um, we're going to look to wrap up soon, but 2017, what do you have in store? What's the plans for BeFast? What are your goals? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, as I mentioned, we, we will try to push further our media platform. We will be in touch with all the startups that we interviewed to get the updates from them because I think it's very important to have like, you know, the track on them. So maybe we can interview them again and if they, for example, about to get funding and then we're going to be the first media that know about this. So it's going to be pretty cool. At the same time, uh, Video Production House, also I'm going to develop uh, this part of the business. And also um, on this point, we're looking at creating videos for those startups who want to be on uh, crowdfunding campaigns, especially, you know, Western companies, Western startups who want to uh, penetrate Asian markets because, you know, it's still different, right? Cultural difference, how people in Asia accept all the videos, it's different. So we are going to offer them this expertise in terms of how to create videos for Asia. So this is another thing. And of course, let's see how it will go with events because we're planning to uh, have uh, a follow-up fashion tech event in July. Amazing. Yeah, so these are the plans for 2017. That's great. And just going back quickly to... What you were talking about with the um, startup campaigns, like the it's like a Kickstarter or Indiegogo type thing. So, and we spoke about this before. So I, I find it very fascinating because if you're trying to crowdfund your project and you are doing a short video for it, uh, BFAS can help you. But they can also help you uh, repurpose that culturally so it is most effective in your target demographic in Asia, right? Yeah, yes. So um, I think that's actually very, very useful. And I think that's very smart that you guys are pursuing that. So that's great. Thank you for sharing that, Marina. Um, so just last two questions. First, as uh, now that you've been on the startup journey uh, for a couple of years now, you've been, you did the corporate thing, now you're the startup. If you had one piece of advice for your fellow friends out there that are working at a startup, struggling, maybe you're out there documenting their, their journey um, and you see them struggling as an entrepreneur, as a startup founder, what piece of advice would you give them? I would say that you have to dare make it, you know, and let it happen. If you have some crazy ideas, just try it on. Try it on. Give it to this idea at least one week, a couple of weeks. And if you don't see that it's working, okay, maybe something else. But then... You know, it's kind of getting in uh, in your habitual pattern. So you just, okay, it, it doesn't work, but I move forward. So dare, sometimes you have to be aggressive as well. Like, um, and dare be aggressive sometimes too. This is very important. At the same time, where to find your, you know, calmness and um, don't stress out too much. I think it's very important to have some uh, hobbies 
it's not only about business. It's not only about, you know, making these particular business activities happen. Like, you have to have some distractions. So have your hobbies, go to hiking, do sports, um, be healthy, uh, look what you eat, you know, diet, and, I mean, like, healthy stuff. At the same time, you have to make sure that you read some inspirational, motivational literature, I would say. It really helps. And talk to people that also inspires you. Because we're all human beings, right? And we all live in society. And if you manage to create this circle of people that almost have the same set of mind, like you motivate each other and get your energy from them and you give some energy to them too. It's very important to have some people around that you trust. That's a good point. I mean, I think that a couple of things on to touch on there uh, from your from your advice is um you know first of all like as an entrepreneur you're always going to have that sort of fear the fear of failure i think and i think that you know I, i've spoken to many many very successful entrepreneurs and they still say that you know that's something that never really goes away whenever you're doing something out of your comfort zone or exploring something new even if you've been wildly successful before you're still going to have fear and the fear of failure will always be there with you, right? It's just how you manage it, right? And of course, like you said, you know, you have to have outlets, you have to exercise or meditate or, you know, do stuff and it's helpful for your creative process, right? And then finally, on your last point, you know, I think that oftentimes as younger entrepreneurs, um, you look around and you see all these people that have made great successes and you put them on a pedestal and you think, oh, they're like gods, right? And like, I can never be like that. But really at the end of the day, they're just human beings just like you and I, you know? And I think that if you're, you know, you're an intelligent person, I can tell just by talking to you. I think if you're of intelligent, average to slightly better than average intelligence and you, you read a lot, like you say, you know, you just try hard, you hustle. I think that, you know, the sky's the limit. It really is. And a lot of it is psychological framework, you know, frame, framing your mind uh, to be positive and, and being able to manage just those inner demons of, of fear. Everyone that, that, has bad and good days. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a roller coaster for all startup founders. Awesome advice, Marina. Thank you so much. Uh, last question is where can people find you and connect with you? Uh, absolutely. Well, it's pretty easy. Um, if you go to, um, bfast.tv a website definitely you can find our contacts there as well as uh, my twitter handle is uh, marina bay asia as well as facebook is marina bay asia linkedin marina bay asia so okay marina bay asia across all three social media and the website is bfast.tv we'll have that all linked up in the show notes thank you so much marina um i was really enjoyed having a tonight's chat with you and uh I'm very much looking forward to your event. Absolutely. So, uh, it's a total pleasure talking to you, Jay. Yeah, great. Uh, best of luck with the event, and I'll see you there. See you. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. All the show notes and links can be found over at jkimshow.com. Come back often and make sure you subscribe, rate, and review. Don't forget to join us next week for another exciting episode of The Jay Kim Show. I'd love to hear your comments. You can find me on Twitter at Jay Kimmer, J-A-Y-K-I-M-M-E-R. See you guys next week. This podcast is brought to you by Hack Your Fitness, the high achiever's guide to getting ripped in under three hours a week. If you're anything like me, you're probably working a full-time job or jobs and trying to find time to balance family life, social life, and last but not least, fitness. Look, I get it. I'm a full-time investor and entrepreneur myself and father of two. So how am I able to stay fit year-round without spending hours and hours in the gym killing myself on the cardio machine? After struggling for the last 15 years trying every workout and diet under the sun, I finally designed a system that allows me to achieve and maintain single-digit body fat for life in under 3 hours a week. Cardio not required. Head on over to hackyour.fitness and download my free 13-page guide that teaches you the simple science behind efficient fitness and smart nutrition and gives you everything you need to know to finally take control of your life. That's hack